Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be having a look at the bloom effect which is an effect that we can use to make things look like they're glowing. So to carry out the bloom effect we first need to render our scene to an FBO like always and we also need to create another FBO which only contains the bright parts of the scene, the parts that we want to glow. There are various different ways of producing this bright FBO, so for example we could render the scene again but only render the bright parts, we could also render the bright parts of the scene to this FBO at the same time as rendering the scene normally to this FBO by using multiple render targets, and that's something that we're probably going to have a look at in the next tutorial, but for this week we're just going to keep it simple and we're going to create it by using a post-processing filter which will take in the normal image of the scene and it will output only the pixels that are brighter than a certain threshold. This will give us an image of basically the highlights of the scene and then we just need to blur it using the Gaussian blur stuff that we've done before and then we'll use one final post-processing stage which simply adds the blurred highlights image to the original image of the scene. To get started you'll need to download the Bloom package from the description of this video and add it into your project's source folder and then just refresh the project in Eclipse so that you can see the code. At the moment this just contains two empty post-processing filters, one for extracting the bright parts of the image and one for combining the image of the scene with the blurred highlight texture. So let's start off in the bright filter fragment and in here we first of course need to sample the image of the scene to get the colour of this fragment and to do that we're going to sample the colour texture and we're going to sample it at the texture coordinates and we then need to calculate how bright this pixel is and there are various ways of doing this um, so for example the easiest way would just be to take the length of this color vector another way would be to get the average of the three color components so we could add together the red green and blue components and then we can divide them by three and that would give us the average of the three components which would kind of work as the brightness but the way that I'm going to use is a slightly more complicated conversion which is this here this is the same as taking the average but the different components have different weights and this is actually called a luma conversion and I'll put some links for more information about that in the description. And once we've got the brightness we can then do a cutoff thing so we can check if the brightness is greater than a certain threshold, if it is we just output the colour and if it isn't we just output black so this will basically cut off everything that is too dark. Um, so that would be one way of doing it. But if we don't want to have a cutoff and we'd rather have more of a gradient and more of a smooth gradient then we can just set the output colour to the colour of the pixel multiplied by the brightness of the pixel so all of the dark pixels will appear even darker, they'll be basically black and then anything bright will be rendered in its original colour. Let's now go to the post-processing class and add the bright filter to our post-processing pipeline. So we're going to need a bright filter and we're going to initialize this in the init method and into the bright filter constructor we need to put the dimensions of the FBO that we want to render it to and we can scale this down a bit for, to improve the efficiency and the lower resolution won't really matter because this is going to get blurred anyway. So we need to remember to clean up the blurred filter uh, the bright filter and then in the do post processing method we're going to apply the bright filter to the color texture and then we're going to put the output of the bright filter into the contrast changer which will render it onto the screen so that we can see it and you can see here that now all the darker areas in the scene are basically black and all the bright areas in the scene like the sky and the reflections on the water and the lines on the box over there are rendered in their normal color. So we now need to apply a blur to that image and to do that we're going to need to have a horizontal blur and a vertical blur object if you haven't created one already. So I'm just going to set up that. So we need a horizontal blur and a vertical blur and we need to initialize these in the init method and again we need to put into these constructors the size of the FBO that we want to render to and if you remember the size of the FBO determines how blurry the output is going to be and if you divide the, if you make the size smaller then the blur is bigger so I'm going to divide the width and the height of the display by 5 uh, but you can use a higher number or a lower number there to get different amounts of blur. Then we just need to remember to clean up the two blur objects and then we're going to apply the blur to that image of the highlights so we're going to apply the horizontal blur to the output of the bright filter we're then going to apply the vertical blur to the output of the horizontal blur and then the output of the vertical blur is going to go into the contrast changer 
which will render it onto the screen so that we can have a look at it. And if you go ahead and run that, you should be able to see a blurred version of what we were looking at earlier. And uh, some bits might appear a little bit flickery, like the lines on the box over there, but if you want to improve that, you can use the technique that I showed at the end of the Gaussian blur tutorial, which was to use multiple blur stages to get a higher quality blur. So the last thing that we need to do is to combine that blurred highlights image with the original image of the scene, and we're going to do this in the combine fragment. So we first need to sample the two textures. So first, the image of the scene. We're going to sample that to get the color of the scene. And we're then going to sample the blurred highlight texture to get a second color. So we need to sample the highlight texture. And again, we're going to sample this at the texture coordinates. And now we simply just need to set the output color to the color of the scene plus the color of the highlights. And if you want, you can change the intensity of the glow by multiplying the highlight color by a certain number. So if you multiply it by 10, it will be really intense. And if you multiply it by 0.1, then the glow will hard, hardly be noticeable. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it, but you can do whatever you want there. And in the post-processing, we now need to apply this combine filter to combine those two images. So let's create a combine filter. We're going to initialize this in the init method along with all of the other post-processing filters. And this doesn't take in any um, parameters into its constructor because this is going to render it straight to the screen. Um, we need to clean it up, of course, and then we're going to put it at the end of the post-processing pipeline instead of the contrast changer. And this is going to take in the image of the scene, which is the color texture, and then the blurred highlight texture, which we can get from the output of the vertical blur stage. And if you go ahead and run that, you should now see something like this, um, where everything looks a bit brighter, and um, you can see there's glowing on the box over there, and everything just looks a bit glowier. And this is the bloom effect working its magic. So as you've seen, the concept behind the bloom effect is really rather simple, but the tricky part is getting all of the settings right to make it look good in your game. So you'll need to play around with the different variables until you've got an effect that you're happy with. So you could try using the threshold method instead of the gradient method. You could try changing the intensity of the highlights. You could try changing the size of the blur by changing the dimensions of the blur's FBO. And I've also seen some examples where people have created multiple different sized blurred versions of the highlight texture and then added them all together in the combined shader for a more high quality glow. And if you try that out, don't forget to connect up the texture units in the shader class and bind all of the textures before rendering in the combined filter class. Next time, we're also going to be having a look at rendering to multiple targets, which will give us a few more options when it comes to the bloom effects, such as being able to specify exactly which parts of objects we want to glow. But hopefully this video will at least have given you a good overview of the bloom effect. So for this week, that is it. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.